In this final digital blending workflow, we're going to look at combining luminosity mask exposure blending with a very different type of exposure blending. Please note that this is more of a bonus tutorial. You could easily blend the exposures we'll be working with using just luminosity masks, but I wanted to show you another option. So if you don't have a modern version of Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom and can't follow the digital blending part of this tutorial, it's not a serious problem. You already have the skills to create the blended image by blending with luminosity masks. But certainly watch the video anyway to see if you can gain some new ideas. 32-bit HDR processing is a relatively new concept. Essentially, we combine multiple exposures to create almost a super raw file, which holds potentially more information. Unfortunately, our monitors don't have the capability to view 32-bit HDRs. So once we've created one, we have to use Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom to adjust it to suit our monitors and then eventually convert it to 8-bit or 16-bit for processing in Photoshop. In years to come, 32-bit HDRs will be a great option for easy, natural and sharp HDRs. Right now, the technology and software isn't quite good enough for us to take advantage of these files. For example, we're often left with overexposed areas that we can't recover when we edit in 32-bit mode. And for that reason, we can combine them with luminosity masks to complete the blending process. To begin our 32-bit HDR workflow, we go to File, Automate, Merge to HDR Pro. Then we go to Browse and we choose the two files we're working with. Photoshop will now merge these two layers for us. On this screen, we just need to select 32-bit mode and complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw. Press Tone in ACR. You should now have Camera Raw open. The first thing we need to do is raise the shadows all the way up. We can see that the sky is overexposed, but when we lower the highlights, the sky looks a bit dull and kind of lifeless. We're going to leave the highlights at zero. To finish, we'll choose Remove Chromatic Aberration. With our image in Photoshop, we now have to convert it to 8-bit or 16-bit because Photoshop can't edit 32-bit files. I would usually edit in 16-bit mode, but to make sure things run quickly during this tutorial, I'm going to edit in 8-bits. I'll do this by going to Image, Mode, 8-bits. In the dialog that appears, choose Merge. In the new dialog, go to Exposure and Gamma, and then press OK. We now have our image ready for editing. Let's recover some of that sky first. We're going to get the sky from our darker exposure. Go to our folder and drag in the file called Dark. In Camera Raw, we'll pull our highlights down to around minus 50, so there's plenty of information there, and we'll remove chromatic aberration. Our new layer will be on top. Drag it underneath. We'll create luminosity masks from our 32-bit layer because it has more information for our masks to work with. Now create a white layer mask on this layer. You'll remember that in Adobe Camera Raw, when we were editing the 32-bit file, that I returned the highlights to zero instead of keeping them low to retain more information. This is because since we were planning on blending that area from a darker exposure using luminosity masks, I knew that we needed to keep this area bright so that it would be easier to create a good luminosity mask selection from it. If it was dark, we wouldn't have been able to make an accurate selection because there wouldn't be enough difference in brightness between the sunset and the surrounding areas. We can go to our channels now and look at our masks. I think we have the potential to use two different masks here, brights 2 or brights 3. In both masks, the sunset area is nice and bright, so it will be selected in our mask. Why don't we test both and see which one we prefer. To select Brights 2, hold down Control or Command on a Mac and left-click on the mask thumbnail. Back to our Layers panel, choose the Paintbrush and set the opacity at 100%. Make sure the brush is big enough. Set your foreground to black and begin masking the sunset. Just go over this region once. Since Brights 2 is a less restrictive mask, the effect is quite strong, but it's also affecting the sky to the left here. However, the blending process seems okay. 
Let's undo this and do the same thing but this time with brights 3. On this occasion, even though Bright 3 is a more restrictive mask, it's doing a better job at smoothly blending the exposures. So we'll keep the changes from Bright 3. That's the blending process finished. Let's merge our layers non-destructively by holding Control, Shift and Alt and E, or Command, Shift, Alt and E on a Mac. Let's group these first two layers in a group called Blended. Press Ctrl and D to make sure no selections are active. The first thing that we notice with this image is the terrible yellow colour cast along the sticks and rocks. This was from a lamp on the street behind me. It's easy to get frustrated with these things. However, we can also look on the positive side. This yellow cast has given us a great way of making an accurate selection of these sticks, in case we want to apply any special adjustments to that area later. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go to Select and color range. Here we can make selections based purely on color as we did in the Seascape tutorial earlier. Choose the middle eyedropper tool with the plus sign and click anywhere on the yellow sticks. Set your fuzziness to around 50. Now keep clicking on the various shades of yellow until it looks like we've made a good selection. Once you're happy, press OK. Open a saturation layer but don't make any changes. Instead, Let's look at our mask by holding Alt or Option on a Mac and left clicking on it. We can see the sunset area is selected which isn't what we want. Choose the zoom tool and zoom into that area. Next, choose a black paintbrush with a smallish size and start painting out the horizon. We are painting directly onto the mask here. Be careful not to go near the sticks but this doesn't have to be perfect. Now zoom out and click on the layer below to make the mask disappear. Now let's save the selection because it's going to be useful for us later. Select the mask by holding Ctrl and left clicking. Go to Select, Save Selection and call it Sticks. You can see the selection in our channels palette with our luminosity masks. Press Ctrl and D to deselect the mask and go back to your saturation layer. Bring the general saturation down to minus 65. If you see any areas that still look a bit yellow, change the brush to white and paint in that area on the saturation layer. Our sticks have now lost the yellow cast and have retained a more brownish colour, but they don't have much life or detail. Just like we did in the last tutorial, we're going to add very fine detail using Nick Color FX's Detail Extractor. But first, control and left click on the mask of our saturation layer to reselect the mask and select our merged layer. And now open up Color FX. Choose the Detail Extractor filter and leave the default settings. Just press OK. Now we have a new layer with only the sticks and rocks visible. Look at the before and after. We've just created some beautiful texture from that one change. When working with seascapes, I love to contrast the texture of rocks and sticks against the various water textures. Down the right hand side here, you can see an area which we don't want to include in the detail enhancer. So we'll create a mask and mask that out. Our image has some lovely colors, but at the moment they're a little bit flat. Let's open a Vibrance layer and increase Vibrance to around 70. This will enhance most of the colours, but especially the subtle colours in the scene. You can see that this has affected the colour of the sticks, which we don't want. So let's reselect our mask from before by pressing Ctrl and left clicking and change our brush to black and begin brushing over those areas in the Vibrance layer. The sticks are still a little bit too dark compared to the rest of the image. The last mask should still be active, so open up a curves layer. You can see the mask has been applied to the curves. Now just bring the curve up until you're happy. If the stick to the left is a little bit too bright, feel free to mask it out. Now we're going to add more energy to the sunset and the sunset area. Just like we've done before, create a new layer. Select the paintbrush. Set the size to 1400 and opacity to 100. 
Now click on the foreground color. Drag your cursor onto the image. It'll become an eyedropper tool. Select an orange or yellow area close to the sunset. Then press OK. Now gently paint in the sunset area without going over the sticks. Change the blend mode of this layer to overlay and reduce the opacity to around 40. This will add more color and energy to the sunset. We'll do this again to add more pinks to our sky. Open up a new layer, click on the foreground color and manually choose a pink color. This time paint around the sunset and in the water. Change the blend mode of this layer to soft light for a softer effect and reduce the opacity to 25. If you feel it's too pink in the foreground, create a mask and gently mask it out at a lower opacity. The final step for these adjustments is a simple contrast adjustment using a levels layer. We're just going to slide the shadows along to the right to deepen the shadows and lower mid-tones a bit more. Now we're going to select all of the adjustments and merge them by holding Ctrl, Shift, Alt and E. Reselect these layers and put them in a group called Changes. To finish the image, we're going to return to Nick Color Effects. We just need to shift the light towards the sun and create a small vignette like we've done a few times already. I can't emphasize enough how powerful this one changes in your images. So let's open up Color FX. Now select Darken, Light and Center, but this time change the shape to an oval. Place the center at the top of the sticks and brighten up the border luminosity very slightly. Now press OK. If the vignette is a bit too dark in some areas, we can create a mask and paint it out. Let's group all of our changes to see a before and after. We can see a huge difference. We've controlled the terrible color cast, softened the contrast throughout, added some lovely detail to the sticks and given the image some beautiful color and mood. In the final video, we look at how to blend more than three exposures, why that's necessary sometimes, and we'll talk more about refining masks.